Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, your host, and today's show features Althea Lucrezia Avanzo, who is a light language Jedi. Luth Althea is also a galactic contactee plus Akashic and psychic healer. Dare to Dream podcast with Debbie Dashinger won the COVR award for best radio and podcast show. Welp Magazine listed Dare to Dream as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. It's high ranking in Apple Podcasts under self-improvement, and it's nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and for a Webby Award. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. We love them for being with us all these years. If you want to learn energy work, become a facilitator, or go to one of their classes, go to Dr. Dane here, H E E R.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I'm a book writing coach, and I take your book to a guaranteed international best selling status. I also coach you on how to write that book. I'm also a boutique publicist. I manage just a certain amount of people who are spiritual messengers out in the world to get booked on radio and podcast. And so I teach you how to do the same, how you can be your own publicist and start getting booked on podcasts and get massive results, increase your business and spread your light, which is exactly why you came here at this very auspicious time. I've got a free gift for you so you can learn how to do this on your own. Go to debbie-dashinger.com slash gift. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. My guest, Althea Lucrezia, is a light language channeler, galactic contact, Akashic and psychic healer, Reiki practitioner, Kundalini yoga teacher plus, tarot and divination astrologer. She was born in Milano, Italy, and has traveled and worked perfecting her craft worldwide, eventually settling in South Africa. Althea has had psychic and intuitive insight and prophetic dreaming from a young age and decided to pursue this as a career. Her specialty is light language channeled in all forms, written, drawn, sung, spoken, and signed. Althea does a lot of timeline clearing on both an individual and collective level. She channels 5D and upper higher dimensional frequency codes, and she anchors them in the third, fourth dimensional matrix construct to help raise the planetary frequency. If you want to learn more, go to her name, AltheaLucrezia.com. And with that, I welcome the beautiful Althea to Dare to Dream. It's great to have you here. Welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. And Althea, you've traveled the world and you ended up in South Africa. I love to travel. I haven't traveled near enough that my love is. And I am curious about other countries and cultures. So why South Africa? What was the draw to put your roots down there of all places? So it was quite interesting because I've been here now for about 12 years, but I only came to the deeper understanding in the past three or four years why I was moved here. There is specific energetic points um, that need to be activated on the land here, and there's specific ley lines and grid structures that I've been working with energetically. So I actually travel quite a bit around the country. Um, I was uh, I was in Cape Town for about nine years, and I was relocated more up north, where I've been doing some work um, on the grid and on and on specific areas of the land as well. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of like part of it. Um, I do obviously still love Europe. My roots are in Italy, so I do travel back and forth. Uh, but I generally kind of like go where I get sent, if you can, <laughs> if you can say it in that way. Um, so this is, you know, the energetic reasoning behind it. And it's quite interesting because my whole family was relocated here. I mean, I think it was part of all our contracts on a karmic level um, and for lessons and experience. So my parents also live in the country here. So we all relocated and they actually moved here before me. So they moved here like 15 years ago. Um, and a few years after that, I decided to come this side as well. Um, and yeah, and my plan is to 
to keep my base here on this side of the world. Amazing. Um, I know that you've said that your main energetic imprint is of the rainbow ray spectrum. What is that rainbow spectrum that you exist on? Can you explain that? Yeah, so basically, um, I seeded, well, one of the first five times when I seeded that I remember is in Pleiades, and through that, it's almost like the way that my aura and energetic field works, when I do healing and energetic healing, generally, okay, you would have your heart chakra, which is your green spectrum, I work on a rainbow scale color, so my imprinting of healing covers the it obviously covers more than what the visible and conscious minds I would be able to see. So if you could explain it, it would be a rainbow spectrum of more colors than the ones that we can see, you know, with our human eyes. Um, so I don't know if this kind of explains a little bit. Sometimes it's quite complex to conceptualize and explain these, these concepts in, you know, what is our human English language. <laughs> Because you see them and you understand them and you integrate them and you incorporate them and you use them. But then when it comes down to like, okay, but like on a practical level, I'm like, this is kind of like the best way that, can, that I can explain it. And anyone who's worked with Pleiadian energy will know that um, it, is, it, is, it is a rainbow spectrum that you're working with. Okay. That is, that is so cool. So um, how are you a galactic contactee? What does that mean exactly? Okay. So, I mean, there's different aspects of ET contact and work that I do. So the light language is a galactically channeled language. So starting from that, that would be, you know, part of it um, as well. So I mainly work with two higher versions of myself. One is a ninth dimensional Pleiadian B, which is me from, you know, parallel future, you know, time, which is fluid um, being. And that's a part of me that I connect with and I channel. Um, and then I work with a 12 dimensional mantis being which is more of like a masculine imprint and um i get the assistant from that through the codes the written codes so those are my two kind of like main et contact beings that i work with but i do channel all sorts of beings when i'm in session with clients so it really depends i work a lot with the Victorian technology as well so when i'm channeling light language and you kind of like the more clicky would be considered a more um, infused, Acturian energetic type of healing, um, if it makes sense. So ah, that- I've heard you do that before, and I thought it was insectoid. I didn't realize it was Acturian. How interesting. Yeah. Because is yeah. that how they communicate, or do they communicate how, telepathy? That's how I pull through the technology that comes from them. Hmm. So I wouldn't know if it's necessarily how they, I think they probably communicate telepathically, um, but that's how the technology comes through from me as well. So a ninth dimensional Pleiadian advanced uh, parallel version of yourself. Yes. And a 12th dimensional mantis being. So that, I mean, you do, you did mention you also channel other beings but those two alone means that you have tremendous healer in you, right? You must lead with healing. Yeah, I mean, I think anyone can heal. Anyone can choose this path. Anyone can work through their heart center, um, psychic vision, psychic intuition, and just, you know, anyone can connect to source. So um, I think for me, I've done this in many, many lifetimes. So it comes very naturally to me. And I've done the work on clearing the karma in previous and parallel lifetimes as well. So that in this one, I was able to step into this version of myself. But I think it's important for people to know that anyone can really, you know, do healing and do energy work and help and assist on a, on a planetary and on a collective level. Um, some people, you know, I think people have different roles. Some people have, as I said, done this um, in many lifetimes. So it almost comes easier for them. But um, yeah, anyone can channel, anyone can, can connect to these high vibrational frequency being. We all have galactic DNA within us you know, um, on a physical level. So even just through that, anyone can connect. Um, so yeah, I, I, I've also had um, experiences with kind of like hybrid being and the hybridization program. So I do speak about this every now and then um, on my interviews. And that was kind of, that's a little bit different from the beings that I work with now. So I had 
when I was about three months old, I have this memory that I was uh, basically taken up. Some genetic information was taken from me. And then I was, um, I have this recollection of me being on the floor, looking at kind of like the, the metal blinds in the house I was in Milano. And I remember feeling the wet nappy, like the feeling of the wet nappy on me and my mom opening the door and me turning around and her being like, how did you get from the cot with bars to the middle of the room? I was three months old. So it, it, like, it wasn't like, you know, something that I could have called out. And I've always had this memory. And then when I went in hypnotic regression, I did the QHHT, the Dolores Cannon method a few years ago. Um, I realized that that was the first time that I was taken and they took some genetic information from me. And then back in 2019, I had two different experiences, but to conclude this one in 2019, I had a vision of um, a hybrid child, like a boy that was mm -hmm. like maybe seven or eight. So it must be like maybe 12 or 13 or something like that now that came to me. Um, and I cried for like two hours. I was just sobbing because I could feel the love. He spoke to me telepathically and he said, wow. no, I'm a part of you. Um, and, and, and this was why that happened. So that's one type of contact that I had. And then back in 2018, I had a very, very, I don't want to say like negative, but I had like a very interesting karmic lesson, which allowed me to release fear because I was scared of some certain types of beings. Um, I was basically sleeping. Um, I was, this was in Milano. I was, it was about I couldn't fall asleep that night. It was about, it was the next day I was flying to South Africa and I had gone through certain experiences these past few days that had put me in a vibrational frequency that wasn't the best one. So I was feeling a lot of pain, guilt, shame, anger. Um, I was just moving through emotions, right? And I couldn't fall asleep that night. I was sleeping on the ground floor. I was in my friend's house in um, their bedroom. And um, because it was so hot, it was a safe complex. We had, uh, the window was open um, because it was very hot. It was like September. Anyway, long story short, I couldn't fall asleep. Around 3 a.m., I eventually fall asleep and I start, and I start, and I'm in my astral space and I'm running, I'm running and running. So I have a very, very active astral space. I've been able to lucid dream since I was like six, seven years old. I do a lot of work in the astral realms and fourth dimensional density. I do a lot of work on the planet. Like I really, really try to use as efficiently and effectively as possible my time in the astral as well to benefit, you know, the planet, the people, you know, and, and in every way that I can. So anyway, so I'm running and I'm very conscious of what is going on. And all of a sudden I see like people next to me, like start like dropping dead. Um, and I interpreted this as a warning. And then as I, as I hide under a table, I start feeling physically being prodded in my lower back. So then my, my soul gets thrown back into my body and I wake up. And as I get up, I turn my head and between there's the bed here and I'm on the bed and there's a wall next to me and between the wall in my bed, this, it must have been half a meter, there was a gray being in my face, like in my face, like it was wearing like a, a gray shirt with like a round collar and sleeves like that. And it was tiny, it was tinier than a human. So I saw that, I mean, that was like a good, maybe like three, four seconds that I saw it and it looked and then I was physically pushed back into the pillow and I heard um, kind of like scuttling out and moving um, outside of the, of the, of the window. Um, and then I got myself up. I was completely drenched in sweat. I was absolutely terrified. Like I was so, so scared because I knew what had happened to me. I knew these things were going on. I didn't think it was going to happen to me. It took me about the first thing I did, I got up and I closed the door. And at the same time, it was quite crazy because the dogs were barking really loud outside. And I looked at the clock and only like two or three minutes had passed. So all of that happened. Like as soon as I fell asleep, it was mad. Then I got back into bed. I was frozen for about two hours. I couldn't even like get back up to go to the toilet. Then I got up um, and then the next day I was flying out the country. So then I did what any kind of like person in this situation that has, you know, even remote knowledge of these experiences do. I tried to contact someone to take me back in the QHHT method. Mm -hmm. So I think I contacted about five different hypnotherapists and eventually the fifth one, um, I then, she told me she was also a psychic for about nine years. And I said, okay, this is the woman I need to go to. 
So I was guided to her um, and she brought me in. I was in for quite a while and then she brought me back. So then this is where the interesting part happens because this is when I then understood the quantum realm and I really had like a, a cognitive knowing of what really goes on beyond our third and fourth dimensional density. So I was taken back there as my higher version of self. So I was taken back and I was taken above me and I was looking at the scene and I saw that there were three of them. And then through the guidance of the woman that was, that was you know, that did the QHHD for me, I looked at these beings and I said to them, you need to leave. You shouldn't be here. I don't give you permission to be here. You need to go. And all three of them turned and looked at me as the higher version of myself, like I even have goosebumps now <laughs> saying this story. Um, and as that happened, it's almost like something clicked. They realized they're like, this shouldn't be happening. She shouldn't be able to navigate the quantum field. She shouldn't be able to be like, no, no, no. This is not what we signed up for. We need to go. We need to leave. And so then they left and they left through the window. And I drew them also. Um, they were basic. They were grays, but it's weird. They were almost wearing almost like a shield over their back. I don't know how to explain it. That almost make them look like cockroaches. Like mm -hmm. that's the, the best kind of way that I can, that I can describe it. Um, so yeah, so this was necessary. And I then obviously went into the experience even years later and they said to me it was necessary for my development and for me to believe. Because if I wouldn't have had something so intense, I wouldn't have believed. And through the belief, my perception switched. And I said, okay, well, if there's not so good beings, then there must be like really good beings. So why don't I try to connect to the really good ones? And then that kind of like escalated into, you know, more of my awakening and what I do now and the understanding of it. So, so yeah, so this, this was quite an intense experience that I had that generally um, is quite interesting for people to, to, to hear about. And you have contact today. It sounds like you are able to program, if you will, this is acceptable, this isn't, which is great and powerful. And if you are contacted, who actually do you have relationship with? So a lot, a lot of them come to me. Like I actually have to say no to most of them because it's like, I can't, some of them come to me for work. Some of them come to me for assistance. Like there's a lot of beings out there. <laughs> And a lot of beings who are very interested in humans. Um, so uh, it's not like they want necessarily, you know, like good or bad things. Well, if they want bad things, they're not even allowed in my field. But so the way I work now is I've actually worked through portals. Um, but then I've got spaces of time where I'm just, I just close them. I'm like, no. I mean, I've gotten to a point where they wake me up at three in the morning and ask me to sit in my pyramid and to do work for them. And I was like, uh, uh, no. Like, yeah. So I get a lot. Um, I, there's only a certain type of beings and there's only certain beings that are part of my family that are allowed to do certain work with me. I have a team of, of about 300 beings that I work with. Um, and so it's, it's almost like not a hierarchy, but there's the ones that are closer and then they expand and delegate to the other ones and then they expand and delegate to the other ones and so on and so on and so on. But most of them are versions of myself, um, of other timelines. Um, and because of the soul fragment retrieval work that I've done, I've been able to integrate pieces of that so that it's almost like um, I operate uh, most of the time from my multidimensional aspect of self. So I'll wake up in the morning and I will have done astral work on like, like 50 different people. And I'll get 50 people messaging me being like, oh, you were doing astral work with me. Oh, you were doing planetary work here. Oh, you were doing that there. Even as I'm like speaking here now, there's other versions of myself that do other stuff and healing. I don't necessarily control per se all of it, but because of the vibrational frequency that I hold and the structure that I maintain within my grid, um, they are all working to assist, you know, on a on a collective level with unconditional love and on service to others. Well, I'm glad I'm on your list now. So maybe, maybe I'll make it one of those nights into the work you're doing. It sounds phenomenal. And are you exhausted when you wake up? Do you feel like you had rest? Or is that not even a problem? It's just not part of the situation. So that's a very good question. I used to get a lot more exhausted now because 
I work through these multidimensional aspects of myself, not really, eh? but I must say I'm very, very structured. Like I'm very good with my exercise, eating habits. I'm very healthy. I get my eight hours of sleep. Um, if I don't get eight, sometimes I'll get six, sometimes I'll get nine. Um, and with me, <laughs> it's quite funny because my mom always makes fun of me that she says that I can just sleep like that. So what I'll do is Sometimes it'll be like, okay, we need to send you information, we need to send you stuff. Sometimes I'm managing like 10 clients in a day. Okay, after like three, four clients, I'll sit down, close my eyes, I'll go in for what would be in your time space here, maybe two minutes, maybe there it's 20, whatever it is. I get recharged. So they they send me stuff to like recharge me and then I wake up and then I'm like 100% again. Like I can, I can, yeah, I did that today. Actually, I had like 15 minutes for 10 minutes. I put my head down and it's funny because I don't even need to like put an alarm because I'll just wake up just before I need to hop off on the other client. So it's kind of like a, yeah, a, a kind of like a healthy relationship that I've developed, you know, with my guides and higher versions of self to be able to, sh to make sure that I take care of my physical as well. Yeah. You're a self-regulating battery. You're, you're self recharging. That's beautiful. And then they help recharge you. That seems like a win. I can't imagine you could do your work without having that ability that would that would be truly exhausting and okay what is your understanding of your purpose here then what is what why are you here what is your job what is your mission what is your pleasure so i mean i think when it comes to like soul's purpose it's really important to know that because we are infinite beings of light we can create our purpose and we can you know there's free will um so a lot of the time people come to me and they're like oh um find out my soul's purpose connect to my higher self and whatnot and i most of the time it's like guys like if I come to you and I say to you, oh, you need to be an architect, I'm going to be going against your free will because you're an infinite being of light. So you can really be anything. Sorry, um, I'm, I might be just clearing on and off as we speak because we're going into this um, eclipse, a new moon portal, and we've just had the 1010 portal. So if I like cough and yawn a little bit, that's just because I'm clearing some energy. Um, so, so for me, as I've said, I've had many many different lifetimes i've lived in atlantis where i was doing i was working with time actually i was working with the construct of time i was working with crystals there as well i've lived in lemuria i've lived as a mermaid i was massacred i was burnt as a witch so <laughs> i do have a little bit of a theme um going on for me but um yeah i love earth and I love being human. And I know a lot of people say, oh, after this lifetime, I'll leave. No, I would be very happy to come back and help even more in another lifetime. So I like being here, even though I've lived off in other planets. Part of my lessons, of the big lessons that I have here in being human is learning to navigate um, emotions like uh, pain and um, kind of like being able to respond to things like, envy jealousy anger because it's emotions that I don't really ever have or ever had growing up I was very like naive and loving and caring and everyone was beautiful and a lot of the time because life teaches you I got found myself you know like friends not being like the best people you know or narcissistic relationships just general kind of like traumatic experiences but because I've had also so many lifetimes in, in higher realms where you don't have these emotions, you don't have these things like, you know, envy and jealousy and whatnot. I wasn't very prepared. Mm -hmm. So this was part of my kind of like experience in this lifetime to be able to learn to navigate that and respond with love if that ever came in my way or in my direction but also boundaries like boundaries was a big one for me in this lifetime to learn um but I would say that if you ask me kind of like what I'm doing here why I'm here and whatnot um I I, I, I tend to work on this kind of like concept which is something that is called the twin union with source which I think everyone who does some kind of energy work or energy healing, if they are working with integrity and from the heart, will at some point be connected to. So it means that it's almost like your heart opens up to a certain amount that you start to understand and work and operate from a space of unconditional love. So it's not you anymore. It's about the bigger picture. It's about the collective. It's about 
what it is that you can offer and do for others. You know, it goes beyond your own personal needs. And um, it's kind of like a thing now in the community where a lot of channelers or a lot of people um, haven't necessarily done this kind of work and are bypassing the heart and channeling only from up here mm-hmm. sort of thing. So for me, that was, yeah, for me, that is a really, really important thing. So if you have to say kind of like how I operate and where I work from and what I do, I would say that I try to operate from a space of unconditional love, from communion with source and with integrity and really try to navigate my life through the heart center as much as possible. Absolutely. And I resonate deeply with a lot of what you said. I feel also, I mean, I never put it in that context, but I have to say, I am highly aware that I came in as a like a child of joy is the best way I can say it. And that I didn't have the skills to deal with a lot of trauma or pain or betrayal or these things you're talking about. And I've gotten way better, still learning. And yes, to the boundaries, it is so tremendous to the self-care and the path. I am right now in my life experimenting with new iterations of boundaries. And every time I feel one is needed, you know, and it can be as simple as saying no to something and as grand as something else. But I, I really start talking to myself, like cheering myself on because it's like, yes, like if I am to fill why I am here and do it happy and whole and intact and all of that, and feel respected and, you know, all these other things, but also, you know, create, for me, it's more about, you know, my beingness because I give a lot. And so, yeah, it's like, it's really, like I tell myself sometimes, you're a badass. That's so good. Go girl, you know, go that you're taking care of yourself like that. And it's good because the more I encourage myself, the more it's getting like this now when something happens and it's a trigger and I'm like, oh yeah, that was bold on that person's behalf. And yeah, that's not for me. That's not for me. And then to say something in the moment and I'm like, "Mm." and then there, you know, conversely, there's those times when I miss, um, it happened last night at dinner with somebody and, um, yeah, there was a moment where I, in reflection, I realized, Oh, I I could have said something there and that would have been quite beautiful for both of us actually. And, um, so I'm learning it's, it is a big human humanity, earth being, learning scale. Yeah, for sure. Something that I always say is if people struggle with boundaries, rather overstep them, put more higher boundaries and then take them down a little. That's going to be easier than you trying to get from here to here because then you won't really have like a measurement and you won't know what's good for you, you know? So rather kind of like overstep them and put higher boundaries and then take them down a little. I find that that tends to be easier. Yes, absolutely. And I will share, somebody taught me something beautiful many years ago. And that is, if somebody asks you a question, I mean, we generally know if we're a yes. And if we're a yes and excited, we say yes. But if somebody asks you something and it's a little bit wonky in your space, just to say, thank you for asking. And I'm not clear, but let me sleep on it and I'll get back to you. I'm like, oh, I love that. Give yourself space and capacity and you know, you'll know. Yeah, yeah. Always, I mean, it's the same for me. Like, rather don't say anything, or say, you know, take your time to think about it, um, than saying like a rushed yes, you know. So yeah, for sure, definitely. And I find that because you know we live in consumeristic society and people pleasing programming and you know we get taught that we need um this external thing to be happy and this to be happy you know and we need to please and if we don't make them happy then it's not okay you know like it's quite deep reprogramming that needs to be done especially um the feminine wound you know especially for the woman Mm. you know so so i find that um boundaries is a very big one on a collective level and i tend to find that boundaries and abundance go hand in hand if you're firm with your boundaries then you're able to kind of navigate life in a way that is more abundant if you struggle with your boundaries and you're overgiven there is nothing left and it almost comes from a space of lack and therefore the frequency will reflect in everything else around you as well that's great i love that i'm just reflecting as you speak that i've never heard that one before and that's cool because i i've stepped into so much right now so much good so much opportunity yeah there's a lot 
of yummy right now. And it's also causing me to say with this, I actually need even bigger, more loving, self-loving boundaries. So I resonate with that. Um, and, and what you're talking about right now, I want to parlay that a little bit into trauma and into ancestral wounds. And I know that's something that you work on. So how do you, Althea, see them? How do you see them in somebody? How do you release them in somebody? Okay, so it really depends. I generally work in the Akashic records. Mm. So I'll go in. So let's say a client. May I ask you, do you work on Akashic records or galactic Akashic records? I work on both. Okay. Yeah. Depends. Like it depends what is needed for the client at that moment in time. Mm. But I work on yeah, I work on planetary records as well. It really depends. There's the way I see them is like different grids. Mm -hmm. And then there's like planetary grids, galactic grids, solar system grids. Um, so it, it really, it really depends. Um, but the way I work is someone will come to me and they either say, oh, I don't know, leave it open. And then I'll go in and for what is needed for them at that moment in time. Or they come to me and they say, hey, like, you know, I really struggle to, um, I don't know, be in a relationship or I really struggle to feel safe and secure and whatnot. And then maybe they have an abandonment wound from being orphaned in medieval times. So they don't feel safe and secure right now. Or maybe they have a struggle speaking up their truth because their throat was cut or they were hung or they suffocated or they, you know. So what I'll do is I'll go into the timeline and I'll assist them in neutralizing it by me giving them knowledge is already halfway there to healing it and um, but then what I do energetically is I, I'll see it I'll almost see it like as a cord like as a cord of timeline and then I send it love and I send it healing and then I say to them guys you also need to sit down um listen to my words and to what I've said um and then they send healing to themselves or to the experience what I also do is I work on clearing karmic ties between family members um partners or things like that um just to assist them in moving on and navigating forward so that's kind of like on a more like practical level what I also do is soul fragment retrieval mm -hmm. so by me giving them knowledge of the trauma let's say they died from stabbing there was a lot of pain I will do the work I'll actually open I'll actually open a portal call the soul fragment integrate it in their system and then close the portal again but then of course they also need to do their own work um so sometimes I'm not allowed to clear over a certain level because they need to kind of like say no or set their boundary or break away from the relationship whatever the the situation is but this is more or less how I work on a practical level how about you, Althea? Have you had your own trauma? Have you had to have your own clearing? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> it doesn't end. It just gets easier. <laughs> so I had a very intense, um, I had like basically a near, near death experience when I was 27. I was rushed to the hospital. I had like, my kidney was about to explode in my body um, so I had to have an emergency operation and that gave me like a really like shock to wake up in life like okay because I wasn't really living a life that was in alignment let's say I was I wasn't in a space of self-love I was you know drinking alcohol and I just I wasn't you know like the, you know in my mid-20s I was just living a life that wasn't really in alignment for where I needed to go and I wouldn't have stopped unless I would have had a lesson in that way um, so that happened. Um, then I went through quite an abusive and toxic experience with a partner as well to bring my child through. Um, I actually have a few videos on my YouTube that I speak about that. So this was a very intense experience. Like he almost killed me when I was four months pregnant. We had to call like police to have him physically removed from the house. There's a protection order now in place. Um, but this was also all very much part of a contract that I signed with this man. And the way that worked, it was like somewhere my mind is blown. Um, basically, I needed his and my genetic combination to bring through the soul that, you know, then came through. My whole chakra system was actually removed and replaced. And I then, I then re-put my old one in after that as well. Um, so... Yeah, so that was quite an intense experience that I had. And um, it, it wasn't very long. It was only a few months that we were together because this child had to come through. It wasn't meant to be a union of a relationship. It was just meant to be a final 
kind of like connection to bring through the soul and then it was meant to dissipate um but in those few months i released all attachment to um, I, I released all attachment and control to everything. I didn't have any control over my finances. I stole all my money and I was in debt. I had no control over my body because I was pregnant. I had no job because it was COVID lockdown. So I, I didn't have any income. Um, everything, all my, all my certain like things in life got taken away from me. And only because that happened to me that I was able to be okay, like, then rebuild myself and get into a space where now I run a successful business. I'm a full-time mom, single mom. Um, and, and, you know, and, and I'm in a happy space and I've built up, you know, my self-confidence. I help a lot of women navigate through that as well. Um, but that definitely was a very pivotal experience. It took me a while before I was able to be in a space of objective observation of it. So where it doesn't really cause me any stress or trauma or PTSD to speak about it. Like I send love and healing to myself, to the experience. I still uphold my boundaries. It doesn't mean that, you know, my boundaries need to go down. I can, you can forgive, but you don't necessarily have to forget. But I would say that that was, yeah, those two were the main experiences with the ET experience that I had in 2018. Those were the main ones that, catapulted me into my journey and into where I am now. Yeah. yeah. Powerful stuff. And it's nice to be in this position, to be able to look back and recognize this was part of my path. It was part of my awakening. Wasn't fun. Wouldn't repeat it, but needed to happen. Um, big, broad shoulders to take all of that on. And I know light language is your thing. And you do it in so many different forms. First, I want to start with, uh, yeah. So I know what I feel energetically with certain people, with light language. But can you explain what I've heard it called like the language of God and the language of the cosmos and all sorts of things. What in your estimation is light language? Okay, so it's... To an extent, a galactic channel language with an expression of the creativity of the soul. And it anchors and navigates in fifth dimensional density. So it goes beyond the rules of space and time. So it gets integrated on a quantum level. Um, having said that, everyone's light language is subjected individual to themselves, but it can have infused energies of Turia, Pleiadian, Mantis, um, whatever it is. Um, it works directly on the DNA structure. Um, so it activates dormant part of the DNA and in the etheric field. So the codes are intelligent and they mutate with you. So let's say I make a specific light language code drawing for a client mm -hmm. for one week, they might need it um, to help with grounding. And that's what it's going to do for them. Two weeks after, they might need assistance with speaking their truth. And that's what the codes will do to assist them, if it makes sense. So it's almost like because they work beyond the concept of space and time, they work in fifth dimensional density and up, um, they mutate, a sort of thing. So when so it's also different in the way that it that it actually you know works on a physical level as well so for me then what i do is when i'm also working with my hands i'm anchoring codes in the construct grid of the earth in order to assist with raising the vibrational frequency of that so for those who have vision activated basically when you see through third dimensional density into the 5d into the quantum realm everything is moving all the time and it's almost like there's almost like these grids of energies that come in and out and come through i had my vision activated back in 2019 i was seeing beings and things before that as well but not to this extent now i can tune in and out so if i want to tune in i'll see everything moving all the time um, I don't tend to do that because it's a bit difficult to navigate your day-to-day -day life, but <laughs> you know, everything is swaying and moving, um, sort of thing. So for those who have vision activated, that's the way that the codes will work and anchor within the construct. And they do anchor in the 3D, but then they kind of like raise the vibrational frequency. Um, I don't know if this explains and and and, and yeah, and brings some clarity to the concept. Yeah. And Okay, and then the, the chakra planetary alignment activation, what is that? Okay, so that was an activation that I was sent back in 2021. 
It's basically just an extension of the chakra system that I do and that I offer to people. I generally offer to people who have already done some work with me or people who are already energy workers and energy healers. So I've got a classical basis of Reiki training. However, we work on the chakra system for conventionality's sake, okay? Mm -hmm. But we are moving into a space where, you know, we were accessing the crystal codes, the light body. Like when I channel, when I work, my whole body is one big, huge chakra, basically. Wow. So what I do is I help people get there. So how do you get there? You activate more of the chakras, basically. It's basically when they are also activated, every single point becomes a chakra and then you access the light body. Okay, so your standard chakras would be your root, your sacral, your shoulder plexus, your heart, your throat, your throat, your crown. What I do is I help people open up and I open up the soul star so it connects them to their galactic center, the earth star into Gaia, the hands, the feet, mm -hmm. the tongue, and the ears and the higher heart, which is an extension of the heart, which connects between the heart and the throat chakra. Okay. And by then having access into, into these, these, this expansive space, they will then be able to get closer, which will then access their light body. I was sent this, I remember it, I was Joe Bird, and it was, I had to go and work in a ceremony the next day, and they kept me up the whole night. I was, I slept maybe three hours, and they were just working and doing and whatnot, and then the next morning they said to me, no, this is what we've sent you. You now activated to be able to do that, to do this on people that come to you. Um, so, so, so that's basically what it is. It's just an expansion, extension of the chakra system to get you closer to your um, light body. May I ask what you mean by ceremony? What kind of ceremonies do you go to uh, or facilitate? No, I was just assisting a friend um, who's working with psilocybin ceremony. Yeah. Okay. I don't do that anymore. I did, I did for quite a while um, just because when yeah when I was opening my channel and when I was working it was a really beautiful space to be able to work in I mean if they call me I'll still go and help here and there um but it was yeah it was I was assisting a colleague of mine got it yeah okay no and no worries um I've been around the block and <clears throat> you know <laughs> a lot of <laughs> a lot of my investigation and I'm working on some really phenomenal projects right now it said that uh, the extraterrestrials are actually the ones who gave us mushrooms, magic mushrooms. And there are certain alien races who, when they come to earth, they choose to ingest psilocybin because it grounds them here. It allows them to operate in this gravity, in this you know kind of culture that we've got here energetically, because it's so much lower um, and more dense than what they're used to. So and I've, you know, even as far as ayahuasca is concerned, I mean, that's another thing I've been looking into the fact that it was first discovered in South America and out of the tens of thousands of plants that are in the Amazon, how did these people know, oh, if I take these two plants and put them together, it's going to create this kind of healing result and this kind of psychedelic. So they also say that that was, you know, the shamans were guided by the extraterrestrials. And I believe all of this, you know, because shamans have long had relationships sure. very open with the yeah. extraterrestrials. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, even with me, um, like I'm very, very sensitive to any kind of like external. I can't really take anything anymore because if I want to feel it, I'll just tune into it without mm -hmm. having to physically take it. So that's how I can access the realm of the psilocybin or whatever else. Um, but when I have taken in the past, so what happens with me is basically my channel just opens up more and they from up there, it, or from whatever way that they see through frequency, they see that the frequency is that. So they're like, okay, let us send her all this stuff to clear because she's so open and she can clear. So <laughs> I just end up like clearing exponentially um, and, 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 and yeah, so basically <laughs> that's how it works for me. So I, I don't really, yeah, but I can tune in if I need to, if I want to. I do work occasionally with Hape, which is the shamanic tobacco. I find it a very like versatile tool um, and very useful to cleanse and clear the system. So I do occasionally work with that. 
Um, I do think that there is a bit of an abuse of plant medicine at this moment in time on earth. Like I think some people are, you know, self-proclaiming themselves shamans or like taking to, you know, there's, yeah, there's a lot of people that come to me that I need to decord from certain ceremonies because they go in, they don't know if they're coming or going, the people aren't holding the space properly um, and whatnot. So, but I do think that in the end, it is like a beautiful tool that was given to help us and to assist us by high vibrational frequency beings for sure. I am so with you. Thank you for saying that. I think that's so important. If people understood, okay, well, let me go there for one minute. Let's just make this an educational moment because there are people who sometimes come to my show and say, I've been thinking about doing it and they will appreciate this. So let me just say a shaman is not somebody who took a three month online course. Truth it's truth. You know, these are people who were chosen by their ancestors. And a lot of the time, these shamans wouldn't have preferred to have become a shaman, but they don't have choice. They're going to have a shit life or they're going to become a shaman, right? And then something predicates it. There is usually a physical illness, a mental illness, a near-death experience. They've been hit by thunder and lightning. And something gets born in them. And then to be activated, what they go through, it's humbling. It's humbling the choice and the path they choose. And then on the other side, of course, they're given so many gifts of service to their community. They're beautiful beings. I'm so big into it and so appreciative of what they brought to our channel, our, our, our uh, excuse me, planet, and the fact that they were able to, yeah, what is going on? Am I channeling? Um, the you fact see, that they are able to, at this really interesting time, and I think that's a lot of grace for a culture, an indigenous culture that's been so dismissed, that they have given us these tools of ayahuasca. And so with that said, if you're considering doing it, you never have to do it. It is not for everybody. But if you do, please do your research. Please find a real shaman, a real healer, a real curandera medicine person who will sit over you and um, be safe, you know. And even when you're on medicine, I'll say you always know truth. You always know truth. You know, do I drink more, not drink more? You're not lost. You know, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, thank you for that because it's really important. Yeah. And, you know, as you said, a lot of people, they don't know. And then they go, oh, my friend went here, my friend went there, and whatnot. And just know, guys, that yes, they can assist you, but you have the capability to do everything yourself without any external help. And it's really important because a lot of the time people that develop attachments to these things and they feel disempowered, then they're like, oh, but I can't access those states unless I do this, that, and that. No, you don't need anything. You are enough. Um, what you bring and the way you can do it is enough. And yes, the plant can help you, but as long as there's, you know, the, it's, it's, it's a healthy relationship with it. Yes, it really is. And I, uh, I play music, I sing, and my partner <clears throat> plays guitar, so we play music for ceremonies. And I know exactly what you're saying about just being in the vicinity of people. We don't prefer to drink when we're playing, yeah. right? Because otherwise it's very difficult. So we're just there to serve the people and assist the whole energy of the room and the journey. But boy, can you feel like you took it and when you didn't. And I guess it's, you know, so much truth to the words, energy is truly everything, even when it comes to plants and mushrooms and so forth. So I, I want to get back to channel light language and because you said a few things I loved. So the first one is that, okay, and I guess you addressed that then, art codes, because I was curious, what is an art code? So is that what you were saying earlier about you can draw something for somebody or receive and draw it and then give it to a client and it works on them? Yes, exactly. But it can also work on a collective level. I will specifically attune specific codes for specific people. Sometimes they come to me and they're like, oh, I'm struggling with this, that, and that. And then I'll set the intention and channel it through for them. Um, but if you go on my Instagram, you can see that there's a lot of written codes that I pull through as well. And I work a lot with the sunlight. So I'll take maybe photos of the sunlight and then pull through codes from that. 
Um, so it's, it's quite it's quite versatile once you are, you know, once you understand how it works. And it's quite funny because those who do follow me on my Instagram will know that wherever I go, I'm always followed around by rainbows. So I always take photos of rainbows because it doesn't matter whether they'll be like little rainbows on the floor or in the car or, you know, <laughs> half the time, I don't know where they're coming from. <laughs> and people who have vision activated, they'll see me and they'll, they'll see little rainbow codes around me as well, which is quite interesting. Um, but yes, your codes would be your written, your written version of them. Yeah. I really like that you also br brought up singing because I was in a light language class. Well, not a class. We were an experimental group. We weren't paying anybody. And we met, um, you know, some people were better than others, a uh, little bit foreign for me, but I, the whole speaking thing, it, but when I let that go and said, what about singing? Cause that's really my first language is music. And that felt so comfortable to me. And <clears throat> I was aware of what was being transmitted also. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So a lot of light language channelers also sing and can sing, and it can come through in that way as well. Mm -hmm. And you also, this is such a cool thing that you help people with business. I mean, <laughs> I do just... entrepreneurs, spiritual messengers. This is like, they need this. It's such an important aspect so they can thrive with the gifts that they came here. So talk about that, um, about monetizing ethically, about some of the things you see that people do out there in our spiritual community and some of the things they could change. So there's so much more ease. Yeah, so I basically, I, first of all, I train light workers so that when they go out there, they know what they're doing. Um, I give them kind of like a basis of understanding on how to access the Akashic records, how to channel, and I kind of like train them. And then, yeah, on the business side, so the way that I've worked and how I have built my business from scratch is completely channeled. I don't have a marketing background. I don't have a business background. I don't have a finance background. None of that. I don't have it. I've got a channel. Okay. So once you learn to work with that, you don't need anything else. It's quite interesting because I had this woman come to me for um, energy healing in person when I was in Milano last year. And she said to me that she was uh, the boss marketer of a huge pharmaceutical company. And I said to her, well, what can I do better in the marketing? Do you have any advice? And she says to me, she's like, no, what you're doing is textbook, what we do and what we teach. But I never studied any of that, you know? So I think it's really important to work with integrity and your life and your lifestyle will reflect your business, your clients. So if you are lying to your partner or you are lying to your friends or you generally lie, you're not an integrity, your work is not going to go well. Everything needs to be in alignment. So your thoughts, actions, emotions, and words need to be in alignment. So that's where the integrity comes in. You say something, you do it. If you can't do it, then you say, oh, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Um, but if if you are uh, nice with your clients and whatnot, and then you go home and you start shouting at your kids for no reason, or you let go of anger in ways that are not healthy, then you're not living in integrity, you're not living in alignment, and you're not going to be successful as an energy worker. I mean, you might in some aspects and others, but it's not going to last. It's going to crumble. Uh, you're not built on a foundation that is solid. So what I teach is I teach the integrity. Um, I explain to them how it works from the aspects on social media. This whole thing here is a whole other dimension, your technology. So how to work with that, how to work with the social media, how to work with, um, you know, things coming and going. I teach protection. I teach gridding. I teach grounding. I teach structure. I teach discipline. It's really important to be structured and disciplined because being in flow and in alignment lies between surrendering to the divine will of the universe and having structure and discipline. We're not in fifth dimensional density as of just yet we're still navigating the 3d and 40 so you need structure like everything if you're committed to raising your vibrational frequency and working on your spirituality you're going to become spiritually stronger if every morning you wake up and you meditate for five minutes you're going to become better at it all the energy that you put in your spiritual practices is energy that comes back to yourself. You're not putting it into anything external. So you're going to become spiritually stronger. You're going to raise the vibrational frequency. And then that's when it comes into the power of kind of like manifesting. So I work for the concept that's called zero point neutrality. 
Hmm. which basically is starting from neutrality. So how do you get there? You ground, you anchor, you meditate, you get into a space where you're neutral, you're everything and nothing. There's no attachments. um, There's no thoughts and whatnot. And when you're in that space, you want to carry and navigate that throughout your day because then you're able to see all the different possible parallel timelines and then make the choice that is for your highest alignment. Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay, wait. So I'm adjusting (laughs) that. (laughs) <laughs> no, I'm downloading everything you're saying right now. I want to go back to this because I feel like this is a very exciting, I feel the excitement in my body and a really important point. I already organically work with this, but not like how you're talking about. So <clears throat> before I go to bed, um, yeah, before I go to bed, right when I close my eyes, I go to the quantum. I go to the zero point to the no thing, right? And into the no thing, I basically put the things I prefer. And so let it all work on my behalf. And at some point I drift off to sleep. I couldn't even tell you. So you're talking about doing a meditation, going into this no thing, this, there is no black, but we'll call it a black space. And from that space operating from there during the day, that is what I don't understand. I'll give you a practical example of like the exercise and how to do it and how to bring it and navigate throughout your day. So let's say you want to, someone wants to manifest financial abundance, okay? Because financial abundance, it helps you with, you know, your life and living and whatnot. You know, we need money to live. So first of all, ask yourself, why do you want to manifest financial abundance? Let's say that you want freedom. You want to be able to be free to travel or whatever. Okay, so this is the practical way way of how you would do it. So you get in meditation, you clear your mind, you get in in zero point neutrality, no thoughts, no attachments, nothing. Okay, when you are there, you become the emotion that um, you you become the the you become the emotion that the freedom gives you. So you become the freedom. Okay, from zero point neutrality, but you become from a space of non attachment. So you go from a space of want, not from a space of need. Okay, and that's how you manifest and and you change your vibrational frequency to anchor in the timeline that has the freedom. Okay, so that zero point neutrality is what you want to operate from on a daily basis, because if you are in that space where you're neutral, then all the possibilities and things that come to you, you are able to see and discern. This is good for me. This is bad for me. This is the direction I want to go. And you're able to see the signs from your guides because your guides will come to you in a way that is non-linear. They're going to communicate through the elements, through the animals, um, through the numbers. But if you're too busy worrying about the past or the future and you're not anchored in the now, in neutrality, then you're going to miss the signs and you're not going to take the steps that take you into that highest alignment. Does it make sense? It's two concepts overlapping here that I put together. Oh, genius. This is genius. I love, love that. Thank you so much. Yep. I just ate that and I'm assimilating all of that. Yep. <clears throat> so in business, then how do we powerfully target our market? How do we figure, how did you figure that out? How did you know how to target it? How did you know how to bring in the numbers and the followers. Obviously, I mean, I just have to say this because I was just in a phone call with somebody I'm about to hire and it's really truth. You know, you can have mad numbers, but do you have engagement? And that's everything to me. I want, and I'm talking all of you, but I'm talking to the universe. I'm talking to how businesses, how, what I do out in the world If I don't have engaged people, people who are responding and commenting and signing up and following and coming when I I speak and, you know, all the things I'm doing, coming to watch the film I make, whatever it is, that's what it's about. That's building your tribe and your community. So how do you do that? How do you recommend we do that? So for me, like, it was quite interesting because even when I had like only a few thousand followers on my Instagram, I was already booked for like a month in advance. So I never had that kind of problem for me then. And then the followers just arrived after sort of thing. And that obviously helps and whatnot. I think um, it obviously helps if you talk and are natural and are yourself and like 
show your face. That's the thing that I see a lot of people struggle with. A lot of clients that come to me, they're like, oh, but I don't know how to speak on camera and whatnot. It's like practice. You know, it just gets easier the more you do it. Um, and then I've also learned that people like easy. So easy website, like click, you know, buy and whatnot. Like it needs to be kind of like easy and user friendly, you know, in a more practical aspect. And then I find that for me, it's like a wheel. Okay. So the more I give, um, unconditionally the more I do the more I help the more I assist the more universe brings me back paying clients so I give a lot of free work free content free healings free lives and I love doing it it's my favorite thing you know the more I do that because I'm giving out um for because I want everyone to be able to benefit from my healings even if they can't necessarily afford um you know afford my one-on-ones so then I've got different options I've got options that are for like nine dollars or ten dollars and then options that are a little bit more and then I've got options in between and whatnot so for me I just try to be as versatile as possible so that everyone can access my content and it's not just for people who you know are in a certain range and want to spend a certain amount of money and I find that that kind of like real system works and like the more I put out the more I give the more I do on a collective level um the more I get rewarded and I think it, it's hard it's a little bit difficult to anchor in it but once you're anchored in it then it just it just goes you know what I mean like you, you stand in your integrity and you stand in your truth and you stand in your heart um you know and then also knowing when you need to take time off like the first two years I really worked on my business and like I did hardly took any holidays like really focused and whatnot until I built it and now I'm at a point where I can't actually like this week I only worked three days because I wanted to take like an extra two days off after the weekend, you know? So it's finding your own balance and what works for you and finding balance and using your time efficiently, I guess, as well. Uh, but for me, it comes back to the structure, to the discipline, to the being, you know, I'm very structured. I'm very structured with my yoga. I'm very structured with my exercise, with my eating. Like it's not easy to an extent you progress as much as you're willing to sacrifice until it's not a sacrifice anymore, but it's a part of your life. Like I don't even drink coffee. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I can't drink tea because it gives me palpitations. If it's too intense, I only drink like herbal things, you know, and things like that. So, um, no, you don't have to be like that. Not everyone wants to, you know, be an energy worker, but when you're, when you're working with a channel and you are offering this kind of service to someone, it needs to be as clean and clear as possible because or else you're not going to be working in integrity. You can't be an energy worker and then go smoke cigarettes. It's like, it's not, it's not I mean, you can, but it's, it's not going to work. You know what I mean? Cheers. <laughs> totally. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for that. That makes a tremendous amount of sense. And I'm so happy for you. I really am so happy for you. I'm glad you're in my sphere right now. And, you know, going forward, my awareness. Um, I love what you're doing here. And <clears throat> I want to shift because you had made a kind offer for those who are smart enough to still be with us live or watching the replay and you're still here, you're in for a treat because Althea had offered to do a transmission for us. So I'm going to volley this back to you, but will you let us know what are your transmissions? Um, do you want people to close their eyes, et cetera? Yeah, I'm going to guide you in. I'm going to guide you in, yeah. So I just want to say, because we're going into this lunar eclipse portal and we've just had the 1010 portal, this will probably be something that's going to help with grounding the system, but we'll see what comes in, okay? So you can just close your eyes. And I might be just burping and coughing to clear energy. As we anchor into the body, find a comfortable breathing rhythm. With every inhale, you breathe in light. With every exhale, you release all that doesn't serve you anymore. And as we call on the Archangelic Collective, Michael to the south, Uriel to the north, Raphael to the east, Gabriel to the west, Call on Archangel Metatron with his blue cloak of protection from above and sound of one to seal the grid from below. So we call on our higher selves of spirit guides. Anyone else who wishes to be present for the greatest and has good, you're welcome in the space. Opening, 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 opening. opening. Opening, opening systems, opening, 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 
Anchoring, 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 opening, opening, grounding, chinning, 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 systems, true higher life, coming in, anchoring, 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 divine rays, opening, expanding, expanding, expanding. Expanding, expanding, activating blueprint structure, more light, anchoring, 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 divine rays, or rays, anchoring, anchoring, achieving, anchoring, achieving, 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 more light, opening, 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 codes of consciousness, codes of knowledge coming in, anchoring, anchoring, grounding, 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 systems. It's going to be an emotional clearing. What I'm doing now is going to help with clearing through solar plexus, all the emotions, releasing, 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 opening, releasing, opening, releasing, opening, letting go, 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 aligning, 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 aligning into higher timelines, tuning, 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 activating 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 into more light, divine rays, anchoring, 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 let it go, 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 let it Opening, 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 expanding, expanding, expanding structures. It's time, it's time to open more into the light, into the light, into the light, into the light. We go, we go, we go, we go, we anchor, we anchor, we anchor, we anchor. Knowledge codes of understanding of self coming in, more of you will understand. Understand the self, through the heart, expanding, 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 Expanding peripheral, putting in more light of rays, anchoring, 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 strengthening peripheral, activating iron armors, activating, activating, activating. Activating, 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 tuning, 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 releasing shields, tuning, 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 Na Maria te ishero to koro kore ishera yataka. Trieta re krakut umro ishera isera sero to koro itakara ishenataka. Tanya taka krea chero kosietaka. Re reo koro rai 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 Rati kurut kurut kurat karat ki 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 akum rat rat rat. Ariane entasit merasirat aku. Merasir itu kurat ik 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 kisiu. Naya taka reasir itu merasir taka kuraisir taka. Aroisian taka res res. 
Куроищина такая, я такая, я такая, я я я такая, я такая, Just in on time, come back to the present moment and to the now. And come back in. Wow. How are you feeling? Amazing. That was incredible. I felt like as you were doing that, my experience was that a lot of uh, okay, the best like allegory I can give you is like there was a jar full of all this amazing things that you were imparting to us. It was just pouring inside of me. And then all of a sudden you would slow down the language. And then I felt it just gently sifting and assimilating within me. And then you go quick again and more would come in and then it would gently sift. And with each of those, it was like the relaxation and the calm and you know, I was going to ask you for something in particular to do for people. And then I thought, no, I really want to see what you're guided to do. And of course, it was perfect. It was just perfect. Amazing. Yeah, generally, when I do um, these live clearings, it's generally like emotional clearing integration. And then obviously, everyone integrates in their own way. So what is needed for you is different than what is needed for me than what might be needed for someone else who's listening. So they will work, as I said, in an intelligent way that is for the highest alignment of the individual. That's beautiful. I love that people can listen to this replay and keep receiving from that download. Thank you so much for gifting us with that. Really extraordinary. And I want to ask you about Conscious Life Expo because we will both be there. You're going to be speaking there. Can you share a little bit about what you're speaking about and why people should come see you? Okay, I'm very, very excited to be there and so honored to be speaking like at this beautiful, beautiful expo. I'll be speaking on the Saturday night at eight o'clock. I will be speaking about light language um, and how it is the new technology that has been coming in to assist. I will be doing light language transmission. I will be channeling live as well. I'll be explaining a little bit about the phonetics behind it and how those work um, and how it can come through in different ways, the different beings that can come through within the light language. So I will be mainly speaking about light language, but also like how this phenomenon is assisting, you know, and it is the new technology that's coming in to help and heal the planet and how quickly it can help shift consciousness, like even how you felt now, how quickly it can assist and it can literally make you quantum leap into a higher version of yourself. So um, yeah, just making it more accessible and more understandable to people and then obviously channeling um, there as well. And I'll be again, divinely guided to see what comes through and is needed for that. Yeah. And um, people can go, I'm going to have in the show notes, the Conscious Life Expo, so you guys can get tickets. Please go. People have watched this show in the last years, and I've met them at the Conscious Life Expo. And they said, thank you. I'm here because of you and because of this show. And really, please come. This is your conversation. This is your language. There's 15,000 amazing spiritual people from around the world who show up. And the speakers are bar none. The experience, it's the thing I look forward to every year. So I'm also going to be moderating a panel on Saturday at 2.30 p.m. It's called the ET Origins Panel. I have some amazing experts who are going to be on that panel, including the beautiful Althea. So you'll want to come see her there as well. And Althea, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next year to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Oh, that's a big one. Um, I guess for me, it's just important to be received in the way that I am and for people to kind of like, even if one tiny minuscule thing that I say has helped like one person, then that's enough for me. 
You know, I mean, that's when I first started channeling and posting videos and entering this world online. Like I had zero expectations. So every second that comes, every day is a gift. Every experience I'm grateful for, I'm taking nothing for granted. So I guess my wish for the next year would just to keep on riding this beautiful wave and to keep on kind of like being present and assisting as, as many people as possible um, and to continue healing myself because it's really important that people know that like I also go through my own healings and as I assist healing the collective, I heal myself with every client that heals through me, I heal myself as well. So um, yeah, I guess that would be, that would be where I want to be, you know? Yes. Thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being brilliant, beautiful you. Thank you. And again, the URL to learn more about her is althealucrezia.com. It's A-L-T-H-E-A-L-U-C-R-E-Z-I-A.com. And I end today's show with this quote, through the sacred language of light, we unlock the boundless wisdom of the cosmos, transcending dimensions and healing souls. Embrace the journey of channeling, for within you lies the potential to connect with the universe's most profound energies. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation. Share it with people you know and love. Go ahead and comment. I do read them all. Next week on the show, I am featuring the amazing Chris Rael. He's a spiritual specialist, a cosmic chaperone, and a guide of ether physics. Thank you so much for joining us today. And remember, dare to create all your dreams into your reality.